Everyone engage in their faith this week. Amen. Oh, amen. Yeah. 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 I felt that kind of carried me through the week, and uh, it was ironic. Uh, throughout the, the week, the, the bottom line word was, I feel tired, I feel worn out, I feel weary. You know, it's this constant engaging in battle of, of life and of warfare, spiritual warfare, you know, and God gives us the victory, so, you know, praise God for that, but, you know, I started realizing, because last week, the Lord put on my heart about faith, and it just so happened that there was a correlating word, and I didn't realize it until, you know, today, God really spoke to me, because he was like, doing it, and he's like, no, this is what it is, and he's like, it's because of my faithfulness, it increases your faith, it directly affects your faith, because of who I am. And it, it gives us the strength to say, you know what, call the things that are there because mm-hmm. God's faithfulness. Right. It directly corresponds. You know, I started thinking mm-hmm. foundationally within a, a believer's life, you know, that it's the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. Mm-hmm. It's his faithfulness to, to those who stray and yeah. struggle and fight through yeah. life. And his faithfulness is what gives us faith to overcome the world. It, it really is the empowering bottom line factor of God and how we overcome this world. It's because of our faith. And it's because God is faithful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, I just want to start out with a definition, and then we'll go ahead and pray, and just uh, honor God in that first. But, uh, you know, the, the definition of faithful, okay, I thought this was really cool. It says, uh, strict or thorough in the performance of duty, uh, true to one's word, promises, vows. And that's true about God. Amen. He's true to his word. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of times we fail to engage God at his level. He's already engaging at the deepest level. Yeah. Uh, he's done everything for us. Already. Yeah. What hasn't God done right. for us? Uh, a lot of times, you know, in the in the low spots we find ourselves at times, we fail to realize that God has already provided a way Amen. for us to overcome, for us to engage the enemy in a full out battle. You know, I was telling Sean that today, you know, just generally conversation, I was like, the general Christian posture is a, a, a posture of warfare. It is like, it is a fighting stance. Yes, it because, is. Um, if you don't look at your life in a sense of you being able to overcome the enemy, then you'll always be overcome. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not what he's called to. It's not his promise. And I, I'll, I'll continue to repeat that as I, you know, feel the Lord lead me because it's true. We, you know, we need to continue to speak words of faith and hope into our lives. Yes. You know, to, there's power in the, in the tongue of yes. life and death. Yes. And if we don't engage that life section, it's easy to speak to death, right? Yeah, because death's all around you. Yeah. There's dead men walking everywhere. Yeah. Uh, they're dead in their sin and trespasses. They, they are dead. And if you allow them to come into your life and breed that death and to allow them to feed your brain, you know, to the TVs and radios, their conversational pieces, it affects what comes out of you. Yeah. And faith speaks contrary to those things. It speaks life and it speaks peace and it speaks things of God and his promises. And as a, as a believer, that's what we need to always engage in. You know, we find ourselves weak, speak words of faith. Yeah. Um, remind yourself of the faithfulness of God because I think that is the caring factor of all the men who have fought a good fight and had finished a race. Um, they remind themselves of who God was to them and what God had already done. Mm-hmm. Um, and God has already done something great for us. Yeah. He's overcome. That's He's right. given us the ability to overcome by His Holy Spirit. He didn't say, you know, uh, seek me once a week, you know, get your word once a week and that'll be good enough. Yeah. He said, seek me every day. Yeah. Amen. He said, you know, I, I, I'm with you. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Essentially, He is with you. You know, that's got to make sense and that's got to hit deep because He said, I'll never leave you. Even when you disabandon, that's when you that's abandon right. him. When you turn your back to him, when you say, God, I'm just too busy for you right now. You know, I'm caught up in the, the enemy system of making money and to produce in this life. You know, I thought about to myself, you know, throughout this week, because I obviously got called out Wednesday. How much of the enemy system is really in and back and working against the saints? Yeah. Because what it does is it, it gets you essentially in a position where you have to abide into it. You know, and it, and it takes away from God. Because yeah. God called us to, to, you know, give our lives to each other and to Him and to serve Him with our whole heart. And, you know, a lot of times we have just a dash of heart to give Him. And we find ourselves in such a weak place because we're so caught up in the system. Yeah. So caught up in the system. You know, Revelation 18, when He's talking about doing away with Babylon the Great yeah. and her system. You know, and does away with the system that has entangled and entrapped them. Yeah. Uh, because God does not call us to be prisoners. You know, He's called us to be free. Amen. Um, so it's just really cool to think about when you think about the realities of what it's going to be like in the future. And you got to talk about eternal realities to yourself. Uh, you know, I, it ain't no good if someone's always feeding you. You got to go to God Himself. Right. He's the bowl, and you got to eat from yeah. Him. You know, and yeah. take from Him because He's always saying, "Here, my bowl's full. Right. I don't run low." You know, and He's the granary man. He's always feeding. Yeah. Uh, it's up to us to go to those to those places and meet with Him and, and dine. You know, have the conversation with God because I realize in all my weaknesses and all my, in my maybe just the, the pressures of life this week, 
um, I realized that, you know, this isn't permanent, and that's really yeah. cool. Uh, it's a really good feeling to know that this isn't permanent. Yeah. You know? And it's something to look forward to. You know, it's a blessed hope. It's a blessed hope, man. Yes. It's something that you can bank on, you can remind yourself of it, you can tell yourself, hey, this is not my home. You know, that's what they did in the, Old Te or in the New Testament. He was 11. They told themselves they were pilgrims in a land that wasn't their own. You know, they looked for a city whose builder and maker was God. Amen. And that's, that's what they rode on every day, man. They were destitute, you know, they had no food, they had no homes, because yeah. they weren't a part of the system yet. The system hadn't been fully established, in other words, you know. So they, they lived the life that, you know, really required just a full dependency on eternal realities. Mm -hmm. And, how, you know, you got to ask yourself, what, how much of eternal realities am I digging into? Am I really applying to my life? And God, am I attached to eternity when I get there? It's going to be just a, another thing for me, you know. Am I working towards this, this goal of being with you forever mm -hmm. or not? Am I working for here? Like, uh, you know, in conversation, I was like, man, I just feel like, you know, as a young man, you get so caught up in this. You can, you can get caught up in this temporal reality and just this, this cycle. You know, you yeah. make money and you give it. You make money and you give it. And it's just this perpetual wheel. And it's amazing, man. It, God has, uh, he has, he gives to all those who seek him, man. He, he takes care of you. But the riches are of the enemy when you seek them for themselves. Yeah. You know, they really are. It's the enemy system. And I don't mean to go on about that, but I just, it, it has, it has a trap, man. It, it, yeah, it is the yoke of bondage on a believer, most believers, mm -hmm. um, unless you stand your ground. And, you know, a lot of times it, you put in a position where, you know, that could, that could be a heavy hitter, you know, when you got a family to provide for yeah. and stuff, it, it's hard. But, you know, we need to continue to remind ourselves that this is not our home. We are a man that is not our home, and we're pilgrims, you know. And if you can remind yourself of those things, I think you're in power. Because God didn't call us with power. Yeah. You know, faith says contrary. Yes. I tell you, if right now you're feeling down, or you're feeling heavy, you're feeling just sick, speak against it. Amen. Speak Amen. against it, you know. I mean, shoot, uh, you know, I don't know how many things this week I spoke against, but dang, I was like, man, Lord, you told me I could do it. So I kind of believe it, you know. Yeah. I'm like, I'm tired of the enemy telling me different, you know. And that's it's just, it's every week. You just got to engage him right where that battle line, man, where faith and lies meet, and you just got to wage war on it. Amen. You know, you're not going to tell me your lies. I'm not going to believe it. Right. You know, just because my circumstances, this doesn't mean God can't change it. Right. I'm sorry, but I fail to believe that the enemy runs this system for me. Amen. He may run the system for those who want to follow me. He run it for me. Right, 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 right. And I want to be with God. Um, so that's cool. You know, we're talking about faithfulness. Uh, to further the definition, to finish it here, it says true. Cool. Yeah, yeah. You know, cool. Yeah. Uh, devoted, staunch. Sounds sounds like a, a weird word to say, but staunch is stubborn. Yeah. You're yeah. just stubborn, man. You're bullheaded. I know most of us here, a lot of us are bullheaded, I think, for all the right reasons. We're bullheaded because we're pursuing God. Amen. <laughs> We've all had things that could shake us, but we didn't give up. Really? You know, we did not give up because yeah. we're staunch, yeah. man. We're yeah. stubborn. Yeah. We're stubborn for the right reasons. Uh, and some for the wrong at times, but you know, God works it all out. Uh, faithful, constant, loyal, implying qualities of stability, dependability, and devotion. Faithful implies long continued and steadfast fidelity to whoever one is bound to or by a pledge, duty, or obligation. A faithful friend. Yeah. Many of us have faithful friends That's here, good. you know, Amen. for the years and the, the ups and the downs, the mountains and the long rides and the halls and the yeah. works. The blood, sweat, tears, you know, we've been through a lot. And uh, this this is exactly what it is to be faithful, to go through those things. Uh, constant suggests firmness and steadfastness and attachment and constant affection. Loyal implies unswerving allegiance to a person, organization, cause, or idea. Loyal to one's associates. Amen. So as you find yourself, you know, just being faithful to God and remind yourself how faithful God is to you, I think it's a cycle. And I'm really excited to talk about that today. So... Let's just get into some prayer real quick and just, uh, you know, thank God for the words he's going to give us. And, uh, you know, to be empowered, man. That's what we want to go. We want to go those doors empowered. Because if you come in here and you leave with your head down, we didn't do the job. Mm -hmm. We didn't encourage one another to do the approach. So, mm -hmm. Father, thank you for giving yes. us this day, Lord. Thank you for bringing us together. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you for family. I think you're family. Lord. We are the family of God. Yes. yes. When we get there, Lord, it's going to be family. There's no other choice now because we're bound by your blood. Thank you. Jesus. It's your blood that has covered every one of our lives. Yes. Uh, there is no lies in that, Lord. And I thank you that the enemy, whatever he would sow, he sows a discord of the brother. Yeah. He tries to separate, but God, we're here to unify. Yes. We're here to give all diligence to keep the unity of the spirit in the body of peace. Yes, so we thank you, God, for your unite our hearts. Thank you, God. We humble ourselves before you because you're the almighty God. You are our Father. Yes, Father. And you love us. And you're here to empower us and to give us encouragement, God, that we can fight the fight 
be a good fight. Yes. And that is our faith. So thank you, God, for this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, oddly enough, I've never, ever done this, ever, but this is part two, okay, round two, I call it, of Finish the Fight. Uh, I, I couldn't get away from it, and I've never done a series, or I'm not doing a series, this is just what Lord gave for today, so it's Finish the Fight round two. Amen. Uh, because I think it's a dual part. I think last week was an encouragement for me, I hope it was encouraging for you to, to strengthen your faith. It, it's got to be the... The, the, the punches you're throwing, you know, the punches when you're, you're engaging that enemy and you're going toe-to-toe with him, you're engaging him with force. You're not just sitting back and taking the punches. So this is the part on the other side where you may be taking some of the punches. And because in a fight, you're going to get hit. Yeah. And when goes to fighting and you hit, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ron. Hey, guys. Um, so this is, this is where we're at here. Our, you know, it's, let's start first and foremost by bragging on our God, right? He's faithful. Amen. Let's start first by acknowledging who he is, mm -hmm. uh, because that's the most important part. We can talk about ourselves all day. We can we'd like to do that sometimes, but let's talk about God. You know, God is good. He is faithful. Uh, he never leaves us. He pulls us from the graves. You know, Amen. He, he gives us the ability to stand every day. When you wake up, you stand out of that bed, God's doing it. Let's just go ahead and acknowledge that first. God has given your body the ability to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you ever find yourself like I have, my shoulder has been pretty messed up the past two weeks. Uh, you, you realize it's God's grace that this thing holds together. <laughs> you know, you're doing some crazy stuff or whatever you're doing. You know, if you're like me, you're doing crazy stuff sometimes. Uh, the body doesn't always hold up, but God mends and heals. And I yeah. proclaim that over myself. Like, yeah. you know, Pastor Dave said, you know, if you can't, you believe for everyone else to be healed, but you can't do it for yourself. Well, come on, guys. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, we need to keep engaged in prayer. Yes. Mm -hmm. Always. Mm -hmm. So his faithfulness, Deuteronomy 7, verse 9. Um, I'll go ahead and read these two if you want to follow. Uh, feel free to go ahead. Uh, chapter 7, verse 9. And this is uh, a really cool verse. It's a really good verse. It says, uh, Know therefore that the Lord thy God, He is God. Is that cool? Amen. He is God. Not the enemy. Not your boss. Not your wife. Not your kids. Not anything going on in your life. He is God. He's the supreme person over your life. He's the first person you see. He's your numero uno. He's the heartthrob, the apple of your eye. He needs to be the one that you're desiring every day. It can't be all these other things first. Right. I'd never be a good husband if I ain't seeking God. I'd never be a, any kind of a dad if I was not seeking God. And I wouldn't be a good brother to you guys if I wasn't seeking God. So God is the very foundation of why we stand here today. Amen. It's no other reason but for God that we're alive and standing today. So he is... The Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which Amen. keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him. Love him. Amen. Do you love him today? Amen. I mean, not with your words. I mean, with every bit of you, do you love him? Because that's what it takes. Amen. 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 A, a vocal, I love you, Lord, you know, just to pacify the moment. Right. And then so you can go do what you want to do is not good enough for our God. Amen. I'm sorry, but let's just call it what it is. If we're too busy for God... It's a very sad thing. Because he gives you breath. Too busy. Think about it. He gives you breath. Yes. Okay? Your mom brought you into this world. Your dad provided for you. But God gives your body breath. The foundation of why you're breathing today. Okay? It's God. Okay? So he has to be the reason why we're here today. Which keepeth covenant. So he's a faithful God. Which keepeth covenant. And mercy with them that love him. And keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Mm -hmm. Did you hear it? A thousand generations. Yeah. He didn't say one, he didn't say two, he said a thousand. Mm -hmm. So don't find it surprising that if maybe your mom and dad didn't believe. Don't find it surprising that maybe grandmama and grandpapa did not believe. Because for a thousand generations there have been many of them before us that you're related to. Yeah. They have fought a fight. And it's because of them that you stand today. Amen. For a thousand generations, God promises still true every day. You sow and you reap, you're seeing God's kingdom working on your life. His promises are true. Can we all agree on that? Amen. 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 God does not come back void. His word is true. Right. So, that's God's faithfulness. That's what we're talking about, right? God's faithfulness. That's what right. we're talking about. Amen. So, Isaiah 25, verse 1. says, O Lord. Everyone say that. O Lord. O Lord. O Lord. <laughs> o Lord. O Lord. Amen. O Lord, you are my God. Come on. Amen. He's our God. Amen. Amen. That's right. We can we can claim that. Isn't that cool? That is a cool title to have. God. And guess what? That's who he is to us. Amen. He's our Father. And that I you know what? I like telling people I serve God. I like talking about God because it's it's telling them who I'm coming from. It's who I'm representing. That's what I'm bringing to your table. Yeah. You invite me over for dinner, it's the kingdom of God coming. 
it, it ain't just me, okay? I'm nobody, but it's who works through me, and that's Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's the kingdom of God coming. So that's who we're representing. It is our God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name. Amen. That's what we just did, right? Amen. And praise his name. You, for you have done wonderful things. Amen. Plans formed of old, faithful and sure. They've already come to pass. That mean for years and thousands of years, they proclaimed that a Savior would come, a Messiah. Yeah. Amen. One to deliver man from the very bondage that he always found himself in. The root and deep selfishness that wars within each one of us. If we don't kill that flesh, guess what, guess what you're fighting against? You're fighting against yourself. Yeah. Fight against what the enemy sold you, and you're fighting against the lies and the weaknesses of this world. God is not weak. No. Even in his weakness, it says he, we can't even touch him. In our, yeah. You know, his weakness is even close to our strength. God is strong. Amen. So that's who we're serving. He's faithful and sure. So his plans of old, they're faithful and sure. Amen. He has done wonderful things for you. Is that not true? Amen. Amen. Today? Amen. He has done wonderful things for you. You need to just tell that. I mean, he's already done wonderful things for me. He doesn't even say it. I mean, he's done wonderful things for me. Come on, everybody say it. Amen. Work on it, man. Come on. He's so done wonderful done things for me. You've got to speak to that because if you don't speak words of faith, you will not overcome this world. Yes. Right. It's just the truth. If you're not going to speak faith right now and just dismiss the enemy right here in church as we're gathering as the church, his saints, going to, church, going to be with him in heaven. Amen. But the enemy will no longer be, praise God. The victory has to come from here because, boy, when you get there, it's going to be a celebration. That's yeah. right. It's going to be a celebration. It is. And as much weakness as I may have found myself in this, this, this week, and I have, you know, I just found myself in just this fight. And I'm like, man. But my faith is giving me the ability to overcome. You know, deep down, I had to dig within. You have to dig within. Yes. You have to dig within. Mm-hmm. It ain't just easy to come off your lips. Now I'm overcome all the time, is it? No, let's be real, man. It's a real fight. It's really hard sometimes. You really feel defeated at times. I guess. Yeah. Yes, we do. Yeah. You could even be sitting in the garden, crying blood, pleading with God. God, please don't. But what does our heart need to cry out? Nevertheless, that's what we got. Yes. Nevertheless, God, let your will be done. Engage that faith. Amen. 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 So we're engaging our faith. Limitations, chapter 3, verse 22, uh, chapter 3, verse 22 through 23. <laughs> Tell us what we'll say. I'm going to go over some scriptures today, just because I feel like it's good to give the word of God. Everything validated and solidified by the word. Amen. 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 Limitations, chapter 3, verse 22 through 23. Amen. And it says, The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. I want to take that to the back. That's a check I love to hold on to and catch all the time. God's love never ceases for us. It never changes. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Amen. Yes. Amen. They have a song about that. I don't know if you ever heard it. It's a, I think it's a hymn name. I don't know if I heard of that, but it's a it's a really cool song, man. And, and a man, you know, when he, I read about him a couple weeks ago, and essentially he went through some very deep and hard storms in his life. But this is the one that he claimed all the time: "Great is your faithfulness." Yes, Lord. He reminded himself, "God is faithful." Yeah. God is faithful. Oh, yeah. You gotta say over your life, "God is faithful." Yes. Second Thessalonians chapter two verse thirteen it says, "But the Lord is faithful." We're going to New Testament. It's mm-hmm. confirmed. It's confirmed. Constantly. God is faithful. Why is why does why does the Bible repeat itself so many times? Because He's trying to get it in our head. You know that God don't know how we think. God knows how we think. He knows we need to hear it all the time. He wants you to read it in almost every chapter and every verse because He right. wants to remind you that He is here for you. Amen. He has already done what needs to be done. He is. He sees your end already. He sees you overcoming. You're going to become. And as you continue every day to engage that reality, you become. As a man thinks his heart, so is it. Amen. Are you thinking you're an overcomer today, or are you letting enemy tell you different? Amen. Got to overcome. Got to overcome. Amen. It's the only way you're coming, over, coming out of this life. You're going out on your cross, or you're going in the grave. I'll take my cross. Amen. Yes. I'll bear it up every day. Amen. Jesus said, you know when you do that? You just go ahead and follow me, and I'll lead you home. Amen. Take up your cross. Follow me. And I will lead you home. And I thank God for that. Amen. I, I long to be home, my God. Amen. You know? And that's that, that's really where if you could engage your heart and you start thinking, man, that is the affection of my life. That is that is the lover of my soul right there. And so many times we fail to go that deep. Can we be real? A lot of times we fail to go that deep. We we like to stay on the surface because we're just so busy. 
We're just so busy. We got so much on our plates. We're so busy. We got kids. We got ministry. We got all this stuff going on. We fail to realize that God is the lover of your soul. The soul, baby. He ain't in just for the flesh. He loves your soul. Yeah. That's what he's saying, man. He, I don't want the flesh. I want deep. That's right. His word cuts asunder, man. It goes to the bone and the marrow. Hey, he loves your soul. God, anyone ever told you you're stupid, dumb, worthless, man? Get that out of your head. That is the biggest lie. Amen. That was said to me today. He goes, man, someone called me down. I said, what does God say about you? I said, now screen that by anyone who ever says that to you and tell me that's important. God is way more important than anybody right. you'll ever meet. Amen. Right. I said, you remind yourself what God says about you. You'll never fail. You'll never Amen. think less of yourself because God has already died for you, man. That's you right. are worth it all to you. That's right. Don't let really anyone degrade you. That, they're just right. lacking their ability to see their value. Yeah. So yeah. They, right. value. they never try to downplay your value. They know it's God who gives you value. Yes. And they know it's the same God that gives every single one of us value you're going to pay. Amen. No matter what you do, what you look like, or how much money you have, yeah. your value is all the same. Man. You die for you equally. And I thank God for that. Because I'll tell, I'll tell my kids, I'll tell any kid that. Man. Don't allow anyone to degrade the down yes. who you are to Christ. Amen. 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 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13 says, But the Lord is faithful. He will establish you and guard you against the evil. A lot of that. Amen. So everyone getting God is faithful. Amen. Everyone engage in that. God is faithful. Okay, It may be repetitious, but I need to get it into your head, man. God is faithful. So when the war comes this week, when the war comes tomorrow, when it comes tonight, whenever it's going to come, it's coming. Okay, it's going to come. Until it comes home, that war is in you. It will go against you every day. You have to engage it. And it's up to you if you want to play offense or defense. I know when I play defense, I got hurt a lot. Okay, you, you're constantly trying to defend yourself. It ain't fun taking punches. It's a lot better throwing them. Yeah. Okay? And I don't mean that in a literal sense. I mean, think about it though, conceptually. No one likes to get hit. The enemy is trying to hit you right now. Yeah, yes. And every day he will hit you. Yeah. We need to just be real about it. He's going to try to take your life from you. He yeah. comes to steal. Oh, he'll steal from you. Yeah. He'll steal your identity. He'll steal who you are in Christ. Yeah. Oh, oh, by the way, he'll, he'll lie to you. Yeah. Uh, and he'll destroy your life. Yeah. He, he does those things really well. He's a liar. He steals. And he destroys. Yeah. And that's, that is really what you are up against. If you could just brave that out for a minute. God... Has given us the ability to come, but the enemy is coming to steal, kill, and destroy us. Amen. And he's done it to many thousands. So you have to gauge at that level, the eternal level, the word level. Greater is he that is in you than is in the world. Greater is he that is faith, man. Faith. Faith is calling things that are as though they are, man. I don't care what your circumstance is, God is still there. Amen. So we're getting it. God is faithful. So now there's a dual role to play. We recognizing that God is faithful, saying, God, you are faithful. Because I've heard everyone say it, right? Everyone said it. If you haven't said it, say it right now. Just get it out of the way because you've got to dismiss it. So God is faithful. Amen. Okay, so now we're going past that point. We're saying, God, let me let my faith be alive. Let it engage. Because if your faithfulness, I can say, yes, I can overcome that. Yes, mountain be removed. Okay? That's faith, right? Yeah. So because God is faithful, He ain't leaving you. He even says he will establish you and guard you against the evil one. Yes. How many people did David put to flight? How many of the children of Israel did they fight against? How many, how many people, thousands and thousands, did they overcome? And whole, whole wars just ended by a small group of people, the Israelites. Right? They went and just demolished masses. Why? How? Because yeah. God was with them. Mm -hmm. The same God that is with you today that is saying, keep going, don't you give up, don't you let that enemy lie to you, don't, let, don't believe the lies that that, uh, you know, call him what you want, okay? Let, let your imagination wander, okay? Call him what you want. He is defeated, though. Amen. He already knows his end. That's right. He does, he knows his end. Yes, he does. Yes, he, yes, he does. You know, I'm sorry, that was like a fire. I, you know, in case you forgot, it is like a fire as much. Having as you've in my life, I have no problem telling you that. <laughs> It is the lake of fire. And I don't say it with any pride, man. God gives me strength to say it because I, I know who I am. I, I'm proclaiming every day who I am. Amen. you got to engage that level. I don't care if you wake up and you're feeling dog tired. If you know you got to lie to your plate, stop your mind. Yes, you do. For that two minutes and acknowledge God. Yes. Yeah. Acknowledge who is going to give you strength. Because right. if you go out and you ain't got yeah. no strength, you ain't got, your, you ain't got your armor on, you ain't got your faith engaged, you ain't ready to fight a good fight of faith. Boy, he's coming for you. That's right. He's coming for you. And he ain't coming for the low blows. He's coming to knock your head off. Yeah, that's right. He's a headhunter. Mm -hmm. He's looking for the blind side. Yes, yeah. Every football player looks for the big head. And every smart football player knows you're going to hit the guy when he's not looking because you're going to smoke him. 
He's going flying. Okay, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for that big hit. Okay, no one wants to go toe-to-toe. Not many people do. Yeah. Unless you're really bad dude. But that's what that means. It's like a fridge. Yeah, like a fridge. <laughs> Unless you're 400 pounds and you're some, right. some meat rolling down the road. Yeah, you don't want to run from that guy. All right? Some guys may do that. So we're going, we're, changing, we're turning the tables. Okay, let's keep going. We're turning the tables. Our faithfulness now. We see God's faithfulness, right? Mm-hmm. Now it's our turn. Okay? 1 Samuel chapter 26, verse 23. 1 Samuel 26. Verse 23. It says that the Lord rewards who? Who's God reward? Every man. The Lord rewards every man for his righteousness and his faithfulness. Let me say it again. Chapter 26, verse, verse 23. First Samuel. 26, 23. The Lord rewards every man for his righteousness and his faithfulness. His righteousness. His faithfulness. You know how you become righteous in Christ? Your faith. It's your faith that is equated as righteousness. That's what he said about Abraham. He was righteous. Why? Because he was a man of faith. Okay? For the Lord gave you into my hand today. And I will not put my hand out against the Lord's anointing. We know who's talking. There. That's David talking with Saul. Okay? He had every opportunity to kill Saul because Saul thought he was a bad man with Jamma coming after a guy who had done nothing wrong. He was just zealous. He was jealous. There was an evil spirit working in the mix of that whole deal. Okay? And God delivered him into David's hand. Now, who wouldn't want to take advantage of killing your enemy? You know what I'm saying? Old Testament, you got swords, you got shields, you got horses. Someone's coming to take your life of many men, and God somehow makes us one leader right into your hands. It says, here, what do you want to do? It kind of reminds me of someone else, Abraham. He said, hey, Abraham, I'm going to go and destroy this whole city. He's conversing with his, uh, his ideas, his decisions. That's the kind of intimacy Abraham had. He goes, I'm going I'm to go, you know, I'm going to think about destroying the city. So what does Abraham do? Petition. Because God, but what if, this is Abraham speaking to the God of mercy, right? Amen. Abraham says, God, but what if you find 30 righteous? Yeah. Oh, okay. You know, that's a good idea. You know me so well, Abraham. You know I'm merciful. You know my heart. I'm listening to you. That's a good idea. God saying that to Abraham. So what does Abraham do? He takes a deep 10. Mm-hmm. So what is he? He goes there, right? He, that's the kind of depth, guys. That's the kind of depth we can have with God. Man. You can be conversing with God. Who says you can't? You have the ability to enter into the veil. The veil was torn. You can go into that Holy of Holies and converse with the living God. Now, what restricts you from that today? Ask yourselves, am I getting to that place of God where I am having that conversation, where I know God, where He's calling me, you're my friend. You're no longer a servant, you're my friend. And I want to talk with you. Because you do see me. You do love me. I know you care about me. And I want to have that relationship with you. So I'm going to tell you my stuff. I'm going to want to talk with you. Because you love me. Don't think God ain't doing that. God converses with men of God all day. You hear a little whisper in your heart. It's because you're seeking it. When you turn things around in your life. It's because you're finding it. It's because your faith's engaging and saying the things that are. is only are to say, you know what God? You can do it. And he'll meet you right in that place. And acknowledge that fact. Amen. Is he too... Is it, is it my lie? Come on. Anyone got to, come on. Anyone know that? God is faithful. Man. Amen. He will speak to your heart. He will be the door. God is not a man that he would lie. That's right. And that's word. Amen. Amen. And then we take that to the bank. That's right. So Luke 16, verse 10 through 12, it says. 10 through 12. In verse 10 it says, He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. You know, so many times I look at my life and I say, God, I'm not doing the big things. I'm not, you know, spending that hour of time praying with you, which I love to do. When you get with God and you force yourself to stay there yeah. until you get past yourself, which takes yeah. time, guys. Yeah, your first five minutes of prayer is essentially working through your thoughts. Right. <laughs> After your first five, ten minutes, depending on where your mind is, if you're, you know, have that multitasking mind, which, you know, my lovely wife has, 
<laughs> you have to engage God for a little longer, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. so you can hear it because He knows who you are. He knows how you. He programmed you that way. That's why you're. That's why every one of us are so special and unique. She can do things I can't. Yeah. She just can't. I left the oven running yesterday. I'm like, how do I leave the oven running? Well, Bob, shall I don't use it that much. Thank God for the one who cooks for me. Because I'm like, I don't know. How to, I, I left the oven running for like an hour. I'm like, looking at 400 degrees and blazing hot. I'm like, holy smokes, man! I'm burning my house down. I didn't know it was running. I didn't. I'm like, well, thank God it's a heater. I turned it off and left the door open. Yeah. Yeah. Because it was cold yesterday. Yeah. Okay. So we got to We got to recognize who we are. You know, the 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 reality of getting depth with God is recognizing yourself. A lot of times we can't engage God in the depths that we need to because we're not recognizing ourselves. When we recognize ourselves, we say, okay, hey God, I know I have some issues. I know I can't engage you real quick. I know I'm struggling. I know all these things. But yet, at the same time, without recognizing myself, I'll never get to that place with God. Yeah. Because if you don't know yourself, you don't know how what the enemy's going to try to do to put your block. You don't know what he's going to try to throw at you. You don't know at the breaking moment before you wake up in bed, your kids running in and say, Mom, the, the water's running all over the counter and everything's blowing up. And you're like, Oh my gosh! And you get out of bed and you're like, Nothing's happening. You know, it's spilled milk. <laughs> the enemy knows you. Yeah. My question is, Do you know you? Have you taken the time to really think about how you tick, how you think? Because yeah. one, you can identify your strengths, but the perk is you recognize your weaknesses. Yeah. And when you overcome those weaknesses, you say, God, your grace really is true. That's scripture when you say, your strength is perfected by weakness because your grace is sufficient. It's true. Because yeah. so many times people with disease and stuff, they're doing amazing things. Yeah. Right? They're, you know, the ADD people are out there typing and writing programs and stuff and doing all this amazing stuff. No one like me could ever do that. I couldn't sit there that long. I could never do that. I couldn't cook three dishes at one time. I couldn't do these things. But God has programmed each one of us in a certain way. Mm-hmm. And when God uses His grace to your life, you do an awesome thing. Yeah, amen. And who gets the glory? The Lord. God. Amen. Because it ain't you. It's Him. Amen. 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 That's cool, man. That is cool. Thank you, Lord. So it says that if you're faithful in the little things, taking the time with God, mm-hmm. giving Him praise. You know, when we talk about being thankful in all things, that wasn't yesterday. That wasn't three months ago. That was today. Amen. That's every day. Amen. As much as we've, we've, we've shared on it, that's still a reality. You have to engage every day. Yes, Don't just let that be today. You may find yourself, you know what? That was a good word. I'm, I'm going to go home. I'm going to start thanking God. And then tomorrow you may find yourself doing a few more times. Then Monday rolls around. Yeah. And then Tuesday's a real bad day. And <laughs> man, that place is just hard to muster up, ain't it? Yeah. Every day. Yeah. Amen. Challenge yourself. That 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 is the fight. Just recognize that is my fight of faith right there. Yes, Can I stay engaged when it's the hardest? It's easy when it's good. Yeah. It's easy to give God praise on the mountain. What about in the pitch black valley when everyone's trying to bite your head off? Yeah. So then he's trying to take your life from you. Mm-hmm. Is that the place where you can engage him? Because that's where we all walk sometimes. Yeah. You have to go in the valleys because God has to show himself who he is. Why? Because he's faithful. And that gives us faith that every time when you go back to that note, man, I'm afraid. I'm tired of being scared. Why am I be afraid? It's like your kids, right? You say, man, here's your nightlight. 10, 11. I don't need a nightlight, Dad. No big deal. You know, 18, whatever. You know, you're sleeping upside down in your bed. Doing <laughs> Hulu. I don't know. It's made my son one day. I'm just saying, you, you grow in your faith. You learn to recognize God. My kids learn to trust me. Amen. You know, faith is, trust isn't something you just automatically get. It's something you earn. It's something you progress in a relationship. So I really like that, that as you get to know God, you recognize he is faithful. So if therefore you have not been faithful in the unrighteous man who will commit to you the trust of true riches. And I love that he used man, right? He used money. The one thing that we all are going out to earn, right? Every one of us, in one day or another, if you're doing it now or you're doing it later, you're going to go out and have to earn a living. Yeah. But he says, if you can be faithful over that, not let that get your heart. Not let that shake you when you're running low. I can make you rule over true riches. Yeah. Yeah. Eternal riches. Thank things you. that have real weight. Not yeah. paper that someone says, this is worth a dollar. And I'll pay you ten of them for an hour. <laughs> and you know what I'm saying? It, true riches. Yeah. And never perish. Yeah. And if you have been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? And that is for every person who needs to recognize they are a leader. <laughs> Which is every single person here. Amen. Okay. Uh, if you can't be faithful in another man's ministry, in another man's work, and something that God put you in to be a part of, because you can't just go and become your own body, right? We're all parts of another. We knit ourselves together to make one functioning body. 
elbows, toes, fingers, Amen. every bit of this body is a piece of you guys, it, it, you know, and it's collective. So when you decide, hey, I just don't want to be the elbow today. Well, man, my fingers are we're not going to work. This forearm ain't going to be no good. This shoulder's going to hurt real bad. You're going to be mad. Yeah. We all need to recognize our place within the church. Okay. Yeah. A lot of Christians fail to engage at that level and recognize their importance in the body. That's true. Yeah. Without That's true. you in it, it suffers. Yeah. So don't think that you're not important when you're not here or when you're not engaging at any kind of level collectively, man. You just being here is enough. Yeah. I'm not saying you have to make a, a, a great dessert. Thank you, Kelly, for all the desserts. Yes. You know, <laughs> I'm not saying you have to do any of that. I'm just saying when you're not here, it hurts. Amen. Yeah. You feel it. Amen. Yeah. Why? Because we're all one. Yeah. 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 We have unified at a deeper level than just saying, hey, I go to this church. Right. No, you become a part of the church universally. And that's important. Amen. So it's so important that believers recognize that within their own lives. I don't know many of us do. But you gotta challenge yourself. I gotta challenge myself that. If I don't come in with a, an attitude that says, God, you made me don't come, then man, I may drag something down with me. Right. And thank God the times that I have right. someone also strong and say, Hey, God is so faithful, right? Amen. God is so good. Or I had to recognize that on my own because man, I am uh, staunch and I'm a little bullheaded. Mm -hmm. You know, and I had to run my head into the wall a few times and recognize, hey God, you're still there. Can we do that? Yeah, and guess what? He's still there. Yes, yes. He's still there. First Corinthians chapter 4, we're getting close to the end here. Chapter 4, verse 1 through 2. I'll just read these real quick. It says, Let a man so account of us. Yes. Everyone say us. 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 As the ministers of Christ. Us. You are a minister of Christ. Okay, where you go, what you do, how you treat people, you're ministering Christ to them. I don't care if you're a preacher. You don't got to be a preacher. That's right. You just got to recognize that there's something you called love, and it's called God, and it can change a life, and you got to let that flow. Amen. Okay, so no matter what you do, you're going to the store, say, man, cool, praise God, let's go. You know, if I'm going out canvassing, you know, if someone comes up and they're just feeling overwhelmed, man, are you okay? And they start, people love talking about themselves. Yes. And love talking about themselves. That gives you a perfect opportunity to pray. Amen. People tell you all the problems. Yeah, He's got to hear. I'm telling you, people, got, people got problems. <laughs> I got problems. Who wants to hear? You know what I'm saying? Everyone's got problems. So we're here to be that, that ear, that, emblem, that, that vessel of love that God is sending out. Moreover, it's required that stewards, in stewards, of stewards, you guys, that a man be found faithful. Yeah. yeah. Being that minister. And I love this. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23 says, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, without doubting, without questioning God. Okay? Not being tossed to and fro no more. Not letting our faith constantly be challenged. Constantly. Right. You're going to have challenges, yes. That's how you grow. It's called tribulation. It's called trials. You're going to go through them. Why? Because it perfects your faith. That's right. It's called the refining fire, guys. And it does something for you. So when you're in it, just say, this is working something greater than I can see right now. you got to find something. Sometimes you just want to fall over. You just want to call it quits. I'm done, Lord. God says, no, you're not. Get going. And he does that. He picks you right back. Amen. So thank God for the, the fact that he does that. For he who promised is faithful. faithful. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. Amen. So now we're going to get on to the very end here. The reward for those who are found faithful. The reward for when you constantly fight and you keep engaging, you don't let the enemy beat you up. And even when you're beating, when he's beating you up, you start playing some defense, you start saying the promises, you start engaging that yes. faith at that level. You say, you know what, enemy? You're a freaking liar. You lie to me all the time. <laughs> yeah. I'm tired of listening to your lies. Right. Okay, if I can't say I'm overcomer, then yes, you do win. Right. If, if, if you can't say that I am an overcomer in those moments, then he wins. So when you go to bed and you're just feeling defeated, I hope your last words are. Thank you, God. I'm still overcome. That's right. Amen. Sow it into your life. Be If you want to go out and sow the good seed of the gospel, you need to sow it into your life first. You need to begin speaking things in your life because you ain't, if you ain't got it, you can't give it, guys. That's right. You cannot give the good news of the gospel if you ain't living that good news of the gospel. That's right. Which is the hope of Christ, the hope of glory. Mm -hmm. It is knowing that you're going home one day. This isn't your home. You don't That's have right. to make a house to it. Amen. You don't have to build it up because he's already got a home for you. He's got a room looking real good for you and he's painting it. And guess what? It's Amen. yours. Amen. And guess who made it? Jesus. Right. The baddest carpenter in the world. Yeah. All right? It's the baddest room in the world that's for you. Amen. My words. <laughs> baddest room is his words. It's for you. He's made that. Amen. 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 So Hebrews chapter 4, verse 9 through 11, it says, and this is really good. I love this. this is a great ending. I, this really encouraged me, so I thought this was just a good place 
to lay our heads tonight. Rest our caps of faith and say, yeah, well, I'm hanging my head on this. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 9 through 11. Here we go. There remaineth therefore a rest. Take a deep breath. Come on, take a deep breath. A rest. From the fight. Mm -hmm. Oh, does that sound good? Yes, to who? The people of oh, God. God. You know how you become a person of God? And you proclaim it. You recognize that you already are, right? You're a person of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works, mm -hmm. as God did from his. Mm -hmm. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into <coughs> that rest. Yeah. Lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Yeah. Of unbelief. He didn't say because you're sin, did he? No. He didn't say because your mistakes, did he? He didn't say because you're just too immature to grab it right now, did he? He said because of your unbelief. That you fall short of that rest. That as much as you've been beaten up by the enemy, recognize this, every single one of us, every single one of us have our war written. We've been tattered, we've been fought against, but you're still here today, years in, months in, days in, doesn't matter. You're fighting a you fight, and you're here today. And let me tell you this. If you want to say that I'm willing to fall short of that rest, you need to check your faith. Because yeah. you need to say, no, I'm entering that rest. Mm -hmm. I haven't fought these years, these days, That's these months, right. these hours to not enter that rest. Mm -hmm. You don't go into a fight not ready to finish it. Mm -hmm. When you go in that fight, you're going to finish it. Amen. I tell you what, if I ever got in a fight, you best believe I'm going until I'm done. I, until these knees give out, my, leg, my legs give out, and I can't fight no more. It, it ain't done until it's over. Because exactly. when I'm done, I'm resting. Yeah. The fight's over. Wow. And I like to know that I'm going to be standing at the end of that fight. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I ain't going out defeated, man. That's okay. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 and 16. So let's just look for a couple verses down here. It says, seeing that we have a great high priest. Thank you, Jesus. That is passed into the heavens. That's right. That's where he's at. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched right. with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted, yes. like as we are. Yet without sin. Amen. Let us therefore come boldly. I'm coming boldly. Amen. I'm coming boldly because I know who he is and I know what he's done. And I don't have any line no more. I'm coming Amen. boldly to that place. Amen. If I come on my knees, I'm coming boldly. I'm saying, God, I'm going to overcome. I'm going to stand again. I'm going to fight again. Because I'm coming boldly. Amen. Until the throne of grace. Amen. That's where he's saying, guys. That's right. That we may obtain mercy. mercy. And find grace to help in the time to need. Amen. Amen. And last one. First Thessalonians 5. 23 through 24. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. Amen. And may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. Thank you. Here we go. He who calls you is faithful. And he will surely do it. Amen. As I have there right there. He will surely do it. He's going to do it. He's Amen. coming back for you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now, my only question to you as believers is this. How do you want to be found? Do you want to be so do it. Amen. Engaging your faith? Yes. Or do you want to be found on your knees crying out, saying, God, I just couldn't do what you said I could do? Because you already give us the ability to do it. You just got to believe it and then walk it out. Amen. Faith always produces works, right? Yes. Otherwise, it's death. If you're actually engaging your faith, it's going to produce those works. When the time comes, you've got to engage it, engage it. Any day, any hour, any time, any time, you've got to engage your faith. Amen. 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 Father, we thank you, God, for giving us faith tonight. Yes. Thank you, God. And we will finish our fight. Yes. You know, this isn't the end, God, unless you rapture us home tonight, which, praise God, it could happen. I'm not saying it can't now, but if you don't, tomorrow, God, give us faith. Lord, you said we have not to be asked tonight. Lord, I'm asking today, Lord, that you would give us awesome faith. Great faith, God. Faith to call those huge mountains, God, the ones that just look so unbearable, God, that we will never overcome. God, give us faith to say, be moved. Yes. God, because they don't have the right to stand there. You've yes. already paved the way. Right. And you said, if you could just believe, we can just believe you, Jesus. Believe your word. That's why we got to get the word, God. 
stay in your word, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for your word, because it is nourishment to our bones, God. It gives us strength. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for giving us grace and giving us the ability to overcome this world. We just ask, God, that you would just allow us to be the overcomer church, God. Yes. Thank you, Lord, that, you know, in our minds we're coming, just having that, hold that title bell up above our heads, God, but, you know, Jesus left on the cross. That was his great victory, was overcoming death. So, God, if we were to find ourselves even in that place, a place to the world would look weak, but, God, in the spirit, what a glorifying way to die is for our God. Yes. Lord, I pray that we would all find a depth of relationship, Lord, that nothing would shake us anymore, that our faith would come alive, Lord, that we'd go out to the world and have hope. We would have something to give, God. Yes. Because we have you, Jesus. Thank you. And that's more than enough to save. So we thank you, God, for just an awesome day. A time of encouragement, God. Let us stand firm in our faith, Lord. Let us fight in the fight. Yeah.